Let's explore the shape morphing options in Adobe Animate 2021. Tip tut. Welcome back to Intro to Adobe Animate 2021. In this episode, we explore the options for shape morphing, whether that's done frame by frame or with tweening and shape hints. We'll break down all of the options, so let's just get right to it. Number five, shape morphing. Shape morphing is the act of changing smoothly from one shape to another. This could be as simple as going from a circle to a square, all the way up to morphing from one entire object to another. In Adobe Animate, you can use shape tweening to achieve this automatically, but it only works well on simpler shapes. You can use shape hints, which tell the computer which parts of your shape are important. Alternatively, you can do it frame by frame, which is just a manual process that achieves the same result, but of course can be as complex as your skill allows. So let's jump right in and explore both options, then apply simple shape morph to our animation. Okay, so inside of Adobe Animate, there are two ways to create a shape morph. The first is using shape tweening and shape hints that we spoke about in the third episode of this series. And the other way is just to animate something frame by frame. So I'll take you through the shape tweening way first. If I were to draw, say, a circle, and later on in the timeline, I wanted to change that circle into a square. Then using a standard shape tween will probably work totally fine. Um, just move this across the stage, right click, choose create shape tween. And as you can see, you get a fairly OK um, transition from one to the other. You might go to classic ease, ease in and out and make it whip around a bit faster. And of course, you can always just delete, redraw the content, and see if that changes the effects. But you'll notice about halfway through, you get some kind of weird like line thickness change, especially if you're doing this with um, like a, a pen rather than using lines. You'll also notice on slightly more complicated shapes, like for example, this flame shape that morphs from one edge to the other, you might get some difficulties around the corners and tips. Now, it is quicker to shape tween and fix that on simpler shapes than it is to animate frame by frame. So I'll show you how. If you go to modify shape, add shape hint, it will add a sort of little red circle with the letter A in it. And if you press Control Shift H as a shortcut, it will do the same thing. So you can see now that we have two red dots here labeled A and B. And on our next keyframe, we have the same two dots labeled A and B as well. Basically, you want to place these shape hints wherever your um, shape is messing up. Uh, and they work as kind of like uh, pins that keep that element in place. So if I were to place a shape in at the top and bottom of this stroke here where the corner is messing up and then went over to my last keyframe and moved those shape hints into the same place. You'll notice they'll go green. Okay. You'll notice that once they go green and you scrub back through, it's fixed that shape hint for you. Um, now, sometimes they won't go green and it will still work, but most of the time they will go green uh, and it fixes it for you like so. And this should allow you to then carry on with your animation using those shape tweens. Now, I prefer the frame by frame message because you can get message method because you can get a lot more um, nuance and character to your animations. For example, you can add tweening and things like that, which will then morph your shapes, you know, with a bit more nuance. But uh, I prefer doing it frame by frame in certain circumstances, because it gives you more control. Like for example, if I go inside my sun layer here on our animation, and we notice that we've got 36 frames to be working with, so I go to frame 36, and I can just hit F7 to add in a blank keyframe there. Okay, I would like my sun to go from a circle over here to a triangle over here, and then back again, okay? So perhaps what we'll do if we want to go back again is we'll put this, uh, what's half of 36, 18, put this at frame 18, drag our original circle over there to duplicate it. Now we could just right click these, choose create shape tween. And to be honest, it'll do a fairly okay job of morphing back and forth between the two. If we added some easing in and out as well, that'd probably look a little bit better. Okay. But to me, that's not really good enough. So on top of that, what I'm going to do is just copy and paste my original circle. In the middle, I'm going to draw my triangle. Like so. 
and I'm going to hide my original tween layer. And we're going to do a shape tween in uh, a frame by frame shape morph in between those two keyframes. Okay. So the reason I like to do it this way is because you get to use all of the stuff that um, makes animation good, like squash and stretch and overlap, uh, anticipation, all that good stuff. For example, <clears throat> I would like in the absolute middle between these two frames, let's call that frame nine. I'm going to stretch out my onion skin so I can see those two frames. And I want to really emphasize the squash and stretch here as if it was um, warping completely. So for example, I might stretch the sun like a ball of putty into this big stretched blob halfway through. And then using my free transform tool, make sure the path between these points is perfectly lined up. Okay. Then halfway between those exact points, I might hit F7 again and have our sun shape here start to stretch out. So you can see how just doing it frame by frame, you get a lot more character and control between your two points. Here, for example, uh, I'd want to more from the circle through to the triangle. So I'd start to indicate those points while still keeping it relatively spherical. But of course, it's like uh, the points of the triangle are starting to come out. And then, of course, it will end up in position here. So I'm going to remove the rest of these keyframes because we're just going to be duplicating them again in a minute. And this is the point at which we end up on frame 19 with our finished tween. OK, so, for example, we now have one frame one, frame five, frame nine. And then on frame 13, we have our next midpoint. And let's say frame 17, just to keep things perfectly even, we have our next midpoint, okay? So halfway in between each of those frames, we can add the rest of our tweens. Um, for example, I can color my onion skin as well if I go to advanced settings and just make the next one green and the previous one red to make it a little bit easier to see what we're working with here, okay? So at this point here, I'm going to come back in in a moment and add our anticipations in. But at this point, we want it to be stretching somewhere between this first frame and this fifth frame. And then by this point here, we want it to be starting to be heavily loaded towards the front. But still most of its weight behind and most of its weight circular. At this point, which is between the complete midsection and where it starts to form up into a triangle, we basically want the rest of the weight to start moving over like so. And I'm doing this quite roughly just so that this isn't a super long tutorial. OK, and then by this point here, we want it to basically be its finished shape, but still squashing and stretching into position. So we'll just give it some extra frames there. So you can already see how this has a lot more character to it um, than our previous animation. And the good thing is you can come in and just edit to your heart's content. For example, I think this frame as well can go. It doesn't need to be that slow. The, you know, perhaps even do these frames on ones here to make it even smoother, like so. And then that way we could add in a settling frame here. Like this. OK, so you can see how you get a little bit more character when you do things frame by frame than you would if you just use your shape tweens. OK, and you might also add in some anticipation, which is our sun winding up to its movement. 
by moving slightly back before it launches forwards. Like so. And you could even get away with just reusing the same shape and squash stretching it a little bit. And then it's whipped across the sky, like so. Now you'd have to, of course, duplicate and reverse these. Let's see if we can get away with just duplicating and reversing the frames, but we probably will have to redraw them because otherwise it won't look realistic enough. But let's turn on our loop and see what we've got to work with. And we can just extend that section out just a little bit. Okay. So you can see how you get the same effect. You've got a circle moving through to a triangle, but you can see how it's a lot more dynamic and uh, unique emotion when you um, animate things frame by frame, which is kind of all animation, really. Um, and you get a little bit more nuance and a bit more control as well. So I definitely will be going through and redoing the stretch from this direction because I don't like the way that that, that looks. So I'll do that quickly in time-lapse mode and then we'll come back and we'll look at the finished thing. Okay, and there you have it, our shape tweened um, shape <laughs> using frame by frame animation. So obviously this is entirely subjective, but to me, this like squashed and stretched and morphed shape here that we use just by taking our circle, morphing to our triangle and thinking about how the points of that are going to um, connect. So for example, if this was our circle and a point would be here, here and here, then obviously as it morphs, it would just become a rounded triangle uh, all the way into a triangle so you just think about where your points become curves and so on um the way that looks compared to the way this looks to me is incomparable but of course it is entirely up to you it's whatever style you would like so um for example i would just go and extend that to the full 36 frames or rather sorry i would do it at the start of the loop so that it works as intended, like so. So there's just a little bit of pause there between those uh, elements. When we get back into our main timeline, we can see our sun will be looping perfectly in the background of the sky there. Just a little bit of fun animation for the background. So I hope you've enjoyed this shape morphing tutorial and you found it a little bit useful. Consider what parts of your animation you could use shape morphing for. It's not just for background elements like this. It could be, you know, his hair, um, his hat flapping around, depending on what style you've gone for. Anything like that, really. So uh, next time we'll be looking at shape rigging and we'll be using it to add a little waving uh, cactus plant in our background. So stick around for that one and I'll see you next time for another episode of Tip Top. An absolutely massive thank you to my level two and above members, WN62, Anonymous, Mel M. Hoover, Maybe Sharma, Ranaka M, Ian Costello, Deshant Singe, Da Vinci Goel, Lone Wolf 16 and Starry Tichi. Thank you so much for being members. And if you'd like to join the Tip Tut Zone and become a Tip Titan yourself, you can join by clicking that button below. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.